Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we are actively making our way through the Hobbit trilogy, Mason, aren't we? We are grinding through it. Here's a little quote from whatever Lee Pace's character is called in this movie. A hundred years is a mere blink in the life of an elf. Yeah, you bloody, bloody, get him to bloody watch these bloody movies. I tell you what, see if you change your mind, Lee Pace, you bloody, ah, 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 you got him. Get you. I, got, I got him all. They're long movies. They're very long. Yeah, I wish he was in this more than his son, uh, is in it. She was not in the book at all. I see. But does a lot of surfing around on orcs mm. and whatnot, doesn't he? Yeah. A lot of padding for time with the Legolas. Here's the thing about this movie is, and, and the thing about Peter Jackson generally. Okay. You know, people, I'm sure when people watched the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, they went, Peter Jackson, master storyteller. Yeah. And he, that is true. Yeah. Like those, those movies are a masterpiece. But he has also mastered a different thing in this, which is to stretch every scene to its absolute breaking point, <laughs> given the amount of narrative that it has, yeah. but without it snapping. So it's like, uh, yeah. boy, what if what if all the dwarves were they're in a they're in a they're in a spider's nest and they're being attacked by giant spiders? That's pretty exciting. What if it was thirty minutes long? <laughs> I mean I guess. And then what? it ends and we're like, all right, well what? more movie is it? What if they were in barrels? How many barrels are they in? They're in the same number of barrels that they're in. And what if it went for thirty minutes? <laughs> what if they? What if there one was in a barrel and then the barrel broke and he jumped out and then he fell into another barrel? Was also <laughs> going in the river. There was just a spare barrel, I guess. I don't know. I don't. I actually quite like the barrel sequence. There's a moment where one of the dwarfs busts out. He's yeah, like yeah. A, he's like a big barrel robot. I thought that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> See, what about the bit during that sequence where there's a few shots where it just looks like a 2002 digital camera? Mm. Like that somebody's dropped it into a river? Do you sure, know what I'm yeah. talking about? I absolutely do, There's yes. a couple of moments. Anyways, I would like, Mason, you mm. and the people watching this video to give me a kudos and leave it a like because I actually did the homework, Mason. I read The Hobbit in lead up to this. You've read that children's book. <laughs> It's quite long, Mason. Mm. And by read, I mean I read some of it and had Andy Circus read the rest of it to me <laughs> through audiobook format. Uh huh. You didn't bring him around to your house. <laughs> I wish, Mason. Mm. Put him in a mocap suit, sit him in a big rocking chair, <laughs> <laughs> and just go for it. You're going to be Stephen Fry. We're going to mocap you to be Stephen Fry. <laughs> He's a better audiobook narrator. He's also in this. He is in this, yeah. Uh, big, big time guest stars in this, I yeah, think. Big More time. so than The Lord of the Rings? Yeah, potentially. I mean, there were less kind of. Really well-known people in Lord of the Rings, mm. I guess. And look, I just want to say on the topic of the book, I fucking loved it, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 I really did. Like, the whimsy, the wonder, the songs, Mason. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as much, but it's better when Andy Serkis sings them. It's really fantastic, and also somehow from 1937. Yeah, right. It's really phenomenal. Like, I cannot stress that enough. This is not a bit. Mm -hmm. I genuinely loved it, and now I want Andy Serkis to read me The Lord of the Rings. Next. This is not an ad. I should get this sponsored. It's probably too late. Is that available? Can you get Andy Serkis to read Lord of the Rings? No, no, he does the audiobooks. Oh, great. Yeah. Mm. But look, it also had me appreciate seeing some of the things that I'd read like seeing them in live action and made me also ignore a lot of the noise okay, which sure. is surrounding the things from the book. Okay. Also, a couple of apologies. I said in the last video that I hate how powered up Gandalf is, how he's using like pine cone grenades. That's in the book. And also I was like, why would Sauron need a dragon? He's got a bunch of other stuff. He's got a bunch of other shit. What does he need a dragon And in the for? book it's revealed his wife took it all in the divorce. <laughs> right. He doesn't have any of that stuff. No, so no, he has he... to get a dragon and stuff. <laughs> he's got it all. But look, when the dragon is revealed in this, I'm like, oh yeah, he's pretty big actually, isn't he? It's a great dragon design, I think. One flaw though. Go on. He's got a big hole in him. Yeah, but that's not a technical... <laughs> Pick up. They didn't. They didn't do that by accident. Over no, no. Workshop. I mean, just as like as a weapon of war. Oh, sure. I right, mean, right. I, I can't remember the third movie. I can't remember whether the guy who has the big crossbow, bow, and arrow thing on top of a big like stone tower. I can't remember whether he does shoot that big hole in the dragon mm, or not. Sure, sure. We'll sure. have to wait and see, won't sure we? Sure, will. Yeah, that's right. There's a little bit of that, isn't there? I mean, if you were to point out one flaw. In, uh, in in, in the movies. dragon, it's the hole. I'm going to point out two flaws. One of which is the there's a there's a lot of like setups of like oh my god we need to light these furnaces but there's no we don't have a fire available. <laughs> Where could there be some fire? Well, actually we do because of the the dragon produces the fire. <laughs> Yeah. And he did. Yeah, we saw him and, do it. And and also, folks, if you're out there, you maybe haven't seen these, and you're a big fan of. Like the scene in a movie, maybe the penultimate scene in the movie where it seems like all hope is lost. Yeah. 
and everybody is sort of resigned to their fates. But then from from you know, just outside your field of vision, it's like some guy from earlier shows up, and you're like, oh my god, it's that dumbass from earlier. He's gonna save the day. There's a big, you know, swelling music. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that happens, I think, in every scene in this movie. And the first one, I believe. Yeah, well, it's the whole, it's the whole. <laughs> but it's been really, it really hit me hard in this one. It's like, oh my god, guys, it's Bilbo. Oh my god, it's Gandalf. Oh my god, it's Evangeline Lilly and <laughs> Orlando Bloom. Oh my god, it's Evangeline Lilly and Orlando Bloom for a second time. <laughs> you believe this? So it's basically, it's anybody you can't see on screen. Yeah, <laughs> at, at any the point they could just. It's um. It's um. You know, at the end of Star Wars, a uh, great shot, kid. That was one in a million. It's yeah. just that. If you just wanted that every scene in a movie. But not the feeling. Yes. Mm. <laughs> just the just the physical act just of that the, happening. Oh, it's, gonna, it's this again, isn't it? Yeah. I also, uh, in reading the book, I don't know if you, you know this, but I, I read the Is book. Is this going to be a series of videos on books, James? <laughs> I hope not. But it's also mentioned in passing at the very end. Frodo's like, or Bilbo's, whoever he is. It's, it's Bilbo. Like, Is it? Uh, he's like, what? I'm confident it is, so it probably isn't. It, Martin Freeman says, "Hey, uh, it's great that you're here, Gandalf. Or what? What happened? Where you been?" He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm at the council, and I, you know, and uh, something about dark magic or whatever, and that's it." Whereas in this, we get the entire Gandalf side quest, and we get him fighting a big black wind at one point, <laughs> and it's all very boring, Mason. And you know, the other wizard's there, and he's like, "Oh, what? What am I doing here?" And he's like, "Yeah, what are you doing here? Fuck off." I'm going to do this by myself. It's uh, it's a testament to the weird goop on his face that it's taken me two movies to realise that was Sylvester McCoy. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, he's good. Don't get me wrong. But he I has love that goop on his face. I love Sylvester McCoy. He's he's amazing. He was an amazing Doctor Who. Um, also, Mason. It's Doctor Hoomst. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> Uh, I I think they did Mirkwood really well. Like a lot of people might have been like, is that Fangorn Forest? Is that the same forest from Lord of the Rings? Uh-huh. I didn't have to look that up. It's a different spooky twisted forest, Whoa. Mason. Yeah. And as someone who's read the book, I enjoyed that. Uh, oh, I also God. liked the bit where they de-legged. Every caravan of garbage we're going to do from this point forward, it's going to be James is going to give it a lot of, boy, this has got a lot of Hobbit vibes. There's action, adventure, there's a bit of magic. You know? Yeah. And we're talking about, I don't know, the Poseidon adventure a remake <laughs> or whatever. They de that spider. Remember that bit? Mm-hmm. That's pretty terrible. That's a terrible thing. They're the spiders, whatever. But the thing is, though, it still really feels like Lord of the Rings light. You know, we mm. get the pretty little dwarf get, you know, poisoned by the, the poisoned weapon, you know, mm-hmm. the dark mm-hmm. magic weapon. We get like a little wormy right-hand man. He's like, sure. hey, 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 I'm, I'm being a little creep. Hey, hey, hey. I think every dynamic has a it works best when there's a weird little creep in it. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, James? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I was a weird little creep. Well, I mean, it depends on the week. I, I guess. guess it does. Yeah. Uh, did you like the callback where he's like, "That's my son Gimli." I did love that so much. Ah, mm. And the goal is like, "I'm in the other movies." <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Sounds like something I wouldn't like, but then I would slowly learn to respect. Well, here's something that I slowly learned to respect, Mason. Go on. Now, a love story in these films are about to blossom, and I'm not just talking about my love for the book The Hobbit, Mason, which <laughs> I recently read. Uh, but this love story between the a lot of <laughs> boss baby vibes about this. <laughs> yeah, we get it. All right. The 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 big love story is uh, the she elf who, who mm-hmm. she's called Kate from Lost Shelf by the way that's weird. Also, I guess I can't really begrudge them putting like a prominent female character in this because there's none in the book. Right. I can't even remember if any are referenced. Like presumably somebody says Gladriel at some point. Okay, but sure. it's mostly dudes just going. <laughs> <laughs> there's probably a few. Oh, the misses. Yeah, the exactly. Miss, er, 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 er upstairs. Oh yeah, Bilbo's always like, yeah, my. Fucking cousin, I hate or whatever. You know, there's a, there's a lot of that going on, but God, that uh, that love story, and I guess we'll talk about it more next week. That's not very good, is it? Sure isn't. My goodness. And again, he should be a weirder little dude. Yeah, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I agree. He's too handsome. Like, yeah, sure, the handsome man and the beautiful woman are gonna fall in love. He should be a beautiful woman and just one of the regular dwarves. Yeah, just with the just a big nose and a goopy eye. <laughs> exactly. And he wins her over with his personality and his goopy eye. And his goopy eye. Yeah, because I think also don't give us the GQ model guy. He's I, the. Come on. I completely on. agree. He doesn't even have like a big prosthetic nose on. That's it's what I'm just saying. a wig. Mm. Or it's his real beautiful hair. I don't Maybe. know. No, I think it's a wig. But that's the thing, though, because you're right, because every now and then they'll cut to, like, a dwarf, and I'm like, who 
knows that? Right? I don't know. Is he new? Is he new from the last one or is this what? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> Cut a few. I'm just saying, just chop a few. I don't care if they're all in the book. Just chop a few. Yep. That's what they should have done pre-production. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Well, Peter Jackson... Meld some of them together. Yeah. Like with magic. They just... <laughs> <laughs> they, were in a, they were in a smelting accident. Yeah, yeah, know. sure. They fell into a, a wizard's fire. Mm. Yeah. And Peter Jackson actually had this fear going into this. He's like, like in the book, Mason, which I recently read, had read to me by Andy Serkis, is that they're, they're not distinguished that well. Like mm. there's a few ones that stand out, but they're mostly just like, you know, the one with the blue hood. And I'm like, no, I don't actually. <laughs> I don't know which that one. Sort of, you know, with his clothes are sort of bluey, browny, grey. Oh, all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> his beard's slightly shorter than the other guy's beard. Oh, mm. is it? Yeah, but, but Bilbo ends up doing like most of the work. And the idea that he's going to get a 14th share of this treasure is quite frankly outrageous. You think he should have slit a few throats maybe yeah, while the rest of them were sleeping? Yeah, I think so. Well, look, he's the one, right, who where he rescues them from, from the elf king and whatever. Mm -hmm. He's the one who opens the magic door on the side of the mountain. Where the, the magic rest door. Of the, yeah, the rest of them get there. And oh, no, I'm going to lose the key. Oh, no, wait. Swelling music. A guy's going to show up. Here we go. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he saved the key. Don't worry about it. Yeah. The, the rest of them, they're like, where's the keyhole? Ah, let's just give up, I reckon. Yeah, let's give up. He's the one who goes and confronts the dragon for some reason. At a certain point, I think if you realise you're on an epic adventure, yeah. you should just not constantly be giving up, you know? Yeah, I you, agree. It's Especially when you get to the door of the thing <laughs> yeah. you're going to. Yeah. yeah. Just knock. Let's Maybe there's somebody in there. Oh, absolutely. Let's talk about Smaug, though. Okay. Now, initially, one of the ideas was, how do you get a dragon to talk realistically? You know, mm. they went through multiple incarnations they thought maybe we'll make him telepathic, but oh. it didn't really work. Mm. And eventually they said... It's a bit modern, isn't it? It's a bit modern, isn't it? Maybe what, finger puppets. Maybe, yeah. Mm. Maybe what they did in the movie Aragorn. Does that one talk? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe what they did maybe in the Maybe voice movie, of Sean Connery. Or Dragonheart, I was going to mm, say. Yeah, 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 Dragonheart. Yeah, good movie, maybe. Mm. Who knows? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think all that dragon stuff is terrific. And what they ended up doing, they went for like a classic dragon look. Peter Jackson was like, I don't want like a creature, like an alien. I want like a classic mm. dragon. I think what they've settled on is perfect. And they move all of the performance to like the front of the face. Yeah, right. You know, and, you, and you really capture all that Benedict Cumberbatcherisms. Mm. That's all true. You've seen the behind the scenes stuff, I'm sure. Sure, sure have. People, like every now and then, like a clip. He's will... a weird grey spotty worm on the ground. <laughs> exactly. A, a grey worm covered in tennis balls. Yeah. That's what he is. But, you know, every now and then a clip will turn up on Twitter that's like, I try and love something as much as Benedict Cumberbatch loves being a big dragon. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't love anything that much. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, but all that's great, mm. you know? And he's a, he's a good, terrifying, unstoppable monster with an obvious weakness, which mm. is what we like. His love for... Cannolis. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to get in the in Middle Earth, I tell you what. Yeah, and he's in that. Yeah, and he's in that he's hoarding cat. them all, and they've, gone, they've all gone bad. What is a dragon even doing with all that gold? I guess he's got gold madness or whatever. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> they love it, do they? They just love it, yeah. Yeah, okay. What's he eating in there? Gold and cannolis. <laughs> no, well, not cannolis. Because mm. he wouldn't be able to get many, I'd imagine. Unless there's a big cannoli smelting facility in there I didn't see that's going on. But even then, how does he operate it? You know? Well, he doesn't. He's got Italians in there. <laughs> does he? Yeah. I didn't know he had a bunch of Italians yeah, in yeah. there. I also enjoyed how he gets covered by the liquid gold statue. And he's like, ah, terrible time for me. Hate this. <laughs> sure. Really good. Mm. Um, what, a, what a plan by the dwarves, though. Just, just make a big gold guy. <laughs> And what, hope it comes to life? What are you doing? <laughs> maybe, maybe they're hoping you'd rush it off screen. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's like a big, goopy, like, chocolate egg, you know? Yeah, he is, yeah. I like that. I like I like all of that. He smell can fly. Yeah. If he just moved out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, I'm, it didn't work. No, it didn't work. Didn't even fill up his hole. What if he had just decided instead of to go to, you know, destroy the, the neighbouring town, just kill all the dwarves yeah. because they just engoldened him? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Great question. Great points. Well, it wouldn't around. have happened because they're the main characters. So Yeah, exactly. Um, just quickly to get back to how this is Lord of the Rings light. Mm -hmm. Aragorn shows up. And by that, I mean Luke Evans shows up and he's like, yes. I've got an ancestor who who did a thing like Aragon, but mm. then he failed at that thing. And now for some reason, it's up to me to do that thing. <laughs> and also I carry all the pressures and burdens and guilt of that thing that I didn't do. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's what it's like in this awful, awful town. But also, I think he's a great inclusion and you need to flesh this character out more because in the He needs to show up later when there's a pivotal scene. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Hello. 
Because in the book, they're like, anyway, the dragon was was having a big siege on the town. Mm. And then this guy showed up and shot it with an arrow. Right. So sure. that's pretty much how it goes in the book, which yeah. I read. And <laughs> you sure you didn't read a, a version that had some pages missing or maybe torn out, you know? Maybe I did, Mason. Mm. James, did you um did you read a copy that was abandoned by like a lavatory or something? Is that <laughs> <laughs> and some pages were required for emergency use? Is maybe that... I maybe I did, Mason. Yeah. Uh, here's a question though. Yeah, oh, actually on. a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um there's a lot of beheading in this. There is. Like it's a crazy amount. Mm. Some say too much. Not I many. say that's fine. Mm. Just do more, if anything. Second question, and this goes back Wait, to Wait, was the first one a question? No, no, second thing that I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this goes back to... Beheadings, your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, good, I reckon. You remember that viral TikTok that was like, here's how I'd change this... I'll stop you there, James. I remember all viral <laughs> Okay. No, go ahead. Go on. Here's, where, here was, here's how I'd change that woman from Stranger Things face to make her like put fillers in her or whatever. Did you nope. see any of that? Absolutely not. Anyway, it was a whole thing. Uh, and it got me thinking, looking at any of these ugly-ass orcs... Mm-hmm. With modern dentistry and plastic surgery, Go on. is it possible to turn one of these into a normal-looking person? <laughs> <laughs> is that a strange thing to think? Yes. <laughs> Have you done that? Wait, you yes, model- it's possible, or yes, it's strange? I wouldn't rule it out. I think yeah. it's possible. You know. Mm. I mean, you probably wouldn't get the one, like the second main one with all the like the divots in his head. Yeah, and metal. sure, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. You could probably do it to like the white one, maybe. Mm. But I don't know. I just think that's something sure. to contemplate. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you could certainly spruce him up enough to, like, you know, sneak him into like a like a like a Dungeons and Dragons playing party or something like that. Oh, like okay, a, right. Yeah, yeah. There, I reckon. Oh, I thought you were going to be like my fair lady, him or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You could do that too. Or your you? family. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's good stuff, Absolutely Mason. Absolutely got you. Yeah. Now, Mason, uh, I actually do want to talk about the permanent uh, and negative effect this had on the New Zealand film industry. Oh. But before we do that, it's green trivia time, everybody. Oh, terrific. This is where I go, hey, here's the thing that I thought. And I say that's trivia-rific. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so I don't know if you've noticed this, but I found it more prominent in this movie. All the dwarves are wearing prosthetics to make their hands bigger and chunkier. Mm, right? Much like those big hobbit fake hobbit feet, right? Exactly. Mm. Well, first time around with the hobbit feet in the Lord of the Rings movies, they'd glue them around the ankles. This time they went all the way up the leg. It was a little Ooh. bit easier. <laughs> you pull it on like a big rubber sock, Mason. Mm. You know? Sure. Uh, anyway, so similar thing with their arms. But what would happen is you'd sweat through them and then it would mix with like the latex and then you'd squeeze your hand and like a milky residue would drip out of it. <laughs> and when they pulled the hands off... Like sure. it would like flick like white sweat wow. everywhere. Awful, yes, that's wow. right. And all the all the dwarf actors became addicted to that weird milky <laughs> juice. <laughs> you see them out there to this day, you know, trying to replicate it. Yeah. Can't do it though. Reach that high, yeah. Anyways, that's... Oh, that's trivia-rific. That is, isn't it? Now, a lot of vegetation, obviously, on a big movie like this, it needed to be cultivated for various like landscape scenes and backgrounds and farms mm-hmm. and whatnot. <laughs> and this time around, they did a similar thing. And under certain lights, it would give it like a blue hue, Ooh. which then led to the working title of this movie, which was Blue Harvest. Oh, that's interesting. Funnily enough, Mason, the same working title for the original Star Wars from 1977. Well, that's trivia-rific. And pure coincidence. Mm. Isn't that great? It's trivia-rific. 18 million gold coins were rendered, Mason. For that's Smaug's treasure. That's terrific. Smaug. And I bet... Some people say Smaug. I reckon probably like a month beforehand, they're like, mm, we're actually, we're got, we put the wrong king on the... <laughs> we put the wrong king on the coins. Can you change it, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can CGI you, guys, can you change it? Or can you at least flip them all up to tails? So yeah, we can't see that's them? right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. According to Forbes also, this is interesting. This is... Oh, was that trivia? Yeah, it was trivia. Okay, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. so. Look... I'm already sick of the bit, so let's just assume from this point forward, I think everything is trivia-rific. Unless it isn't, and okay. then you say something. I'll right? say something, yeah. Right, cool. That's right. Yeah. Then I'll s- finally speak up. <laughs> so according to Forbes, Schmaug, uh, some people say Smorg, the sport, <laughs> he is actually- I say Smorg after Smorgies. Oh, yeah, yeah. The um, the Sizzler knockoff that-, that Yeah, yeah, that no longer exists. Or yes, maybe does, maybe there's mm. one in Bendigo or something. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Smaug is actually the richest- fictional character to ever exist. He has 62 billion worth of gold, which is kind of crazy that that's less than like real people have now. <laughs> sure, right. That's bizarre, right? Yeah. Uh, so that includes priceless elvish armor and other various baubles and, and trinkets and whatnot. Now, he also comes ahead of Richie Rich, Tony Stark, and Carlisle Cullen from Twilight, oh, from Twilight who's sure. apparently a billionaire through interest alone. His interest in various financial markets, no doubt. 
That's terrific. Great. Anyway, Mason, mm-hmm. let's talk ruining a film industry. Oh, boy. I know. Now we I have know to do another one. Here it, we go. It's hard because we love these movies. And Oop. to come in and just go, no. there's actually some negative stuff associated with this. I would say this. whatever you're going to say now, absolutely not worth it for the movies <laughs> we got. <laughs> <laughs> having having recently seen the first two and having a vague memory of the third, yep. huge mistake. Okay, here we go. Now, I just also want to clarify a lot of this, but not all of it, comes from three videos by Lindsay Ellis, and they go deep into like the production behind this, you know, various thoughts and feelings related to these movies and the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. She even has a great interview in it uh, with John Callan, who played Oin in this. Oh, Oin. He's like, Oi, I'm Oin. And I'm like, you pr- probably. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> You might be lying, but I'm not willing to watch these again and check. So <laughs> so it was rumoured that one of the reasons that Peter Jackson actually stepped in is because that would keep these movies in New Zealand. Mm. But then, of course, uh, as opposed to the first movie where it was m- where he was mostly answering to New Line, there's like five different production houses behind this. Like Warner Brothers got a piece of it mm-hmm. and uh, d- others. Who knows how? It's, there's like five, It's all right? part of the viewer's universe, It might just be, exactly. Mm-hmm. Sure. So the thing is, though, off the back of the original Lord of the Rings movies, if you were a resident of New Zealand and you were in those movies, say like a Carl Urban, for example, you didn't get any residuals uh-huh. if you were like an Elijah Wood. They came to these movies under different conditions. Interesting. They still get some kickbacks, or did for a time at least. So Peter Jackson initially wanted to change that to ensure that this didn't happen for a second time, right? So before these movies went into production, the New Zealand Actors' Equity Union, they were pushed by a similar Australian union to ensure better conditions. So there was a stop work order issued until things improved, right? Yeah. So everybody, every actor who was going to be in this was like, no, we're not doing anything until, you know, we, we get a bit more coin. You know, oh, we yeah. get actually properly paid for our work. But in doing so, there was a bit of pushback because that put everybody else's jobs at risk. So if you were, say, you know, a set builder, an artist, mm. or you were in costuming. The best boy. The best boy, for example. Mm. You're like, I worked hard to become the best boy. I'm not going to become the worst boy overnight. <laughs> That's nice. right. Because... Warner Brothers were like, well, we'll just move. We'll go somewhere else. And then all of the other jobs get yanked, right? right. And it's terrible for the New Zealand economy, et cetera, and so forth. So Prime Minister John Key, who was New Zealand Prime Minister at the time, he wanted to make this right. Now, he actually, he worked for Merrill Lynch, which is a subsidiary of the Bank of America. He was part of a like wealth management firm. And then he was Prime Minister, as often happens, Mm. because, you know, everything's fucked, Mason. (laughs) Anyways. I'm not seeing a conflict of interest (laughs) at all, but go on. So he was also known as the smiling assassin after cheerfully (laughs) sacking potentially hundreds of employees with his position at this bank, whilst earning around 5 million New Zealand dollars per year in the late 90s and early 2000s. So that's who we're talking about. So he met up with Warner Brothers and all the studio heads and then he decided to push through a legislation which resulted in tens of millions of New Zealand subsidies going to Warner Brothers for filming them and also all film workers were then considered independent contractors so they didn't have any ability to organise or unionise or any of that. So all that fell apart. And you might be like... Well, everything must be fine now, Mason. That's what you're probably thinking. I'm not thinking that. You're probably that. like, that's trivia tastic or whatever. No, no, no. no I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do one of your famous vetoes. I'm, I'm going to veto that being trivia-tastic. I think that's bad, actually. Okay. But the thing is, this still affects things in New Zealand today. Like, for example, you know, Amazon are obviously doing that $1 billion Lord of the Rings prequel mm. series, right? It's the most expensive show to ever be made. But initially, or maybe, you know, since they're coming back here, the Lord of the Rings will alter these laws, oh. all right? And will make everything fair again. So there was rumblings of that. And so Amazon were just like... Hey, what if we film these in Scotland? Oh, sure. And so none of that happened. Mm. So that's where we're at. Wow. And that brings us to the modern day, which is the year it is now. Anyways, Mason, <laughs> box office time. That all, that all sounds bad. No, no, it is bad. We'll film The Lord of the Rings in <laughs> Scotland. As if. Ack. Right. Thank you. That's the, bad, I think. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. If you're Scottish, let, let us mm. know if that's bad. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, box office. Uh, you know, obviously, Warner Brothers did very well out of this, as did everyone else, except for the people. We didn't. <laughs> and the people in it. I oh, yeah, guess. <laughs> uh, I lost 20 bucks <laughs> on the last one because I had to see it in the cinemas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it cost $250 million, but it, of course, made 
959 million, which was slightly less than the previous one, which made a bit over a billion. But still, people are happy to go out and see a drag and scuttle about with a big hole in him. That's very true. Anyways, we're going to be back next week, aren't we, Mason? Yes. Because we cannot stop talking about the Hobbit. We've stopped at two before in a trilogy. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Well, that's true. But I I'm guess. kind of, I'm kind of excited to see what the third one brings. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. And of course, next week I'm going to be talking about the. Uh, the original version of this, which was going to be made by Guillermo del Toro, his yeah. two movies. Yeah. That's a fascinating story I, in itself. I think I remember the, the last one has a lot of like weird CGI people doing CGI flips. Yep. A lot of people like... Yeah, you remember that correctly. I think I remember somebody like like running on like... like you're like, right, yeah. Like bits of rock that are yes. just floating in the air. That's, yeah, yes, that, are, are. that are falling. Yeah, 100%. I remember that. Yeah, right. that was bad, I think. That was Legolas. Yeah, he's actually got a... I feel like he has a, he has a fun little brawl in the town in this. Okay, you yeah. know, and that's mm-hmm. good. Sure, sure, sure. And then at the end, it ends with him chasing that orc or whatever. And I'm like, well, I hope this guy who's not supposed to be in that this movie gets that other guy or whatever. <laughs> oh my god, he's here! <laughs> yeah, the audacity mm. to kill the dragon in the first ten minutes of the next movie as well. My goodness, and then and then do and then more just, movie. Then it's just three hours of people shuffling around. <laughs> what are we do with this bloody dragon. Yeah, can we roll it? Probably not. <laughs> Should we roll it back into the ocean? It didn't come from the ocean. <laughs> it's a dragon. You sure? <laughs> it's like it belongs in the ocean, honestly. It's got scales. <laughs> and then there's a vote then there's and a, a vo- song. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, if you do want to see that earlier, you can head over to bigsandwich.co where it will absolutely be there, won't it, Mason? It absolutely will be there. Uh, it'll go up a, f- uh, a day early. Also, if you do sign up there, it's like our private Patreon. There's also bonus podcasts. There's movie commentaries. Uh, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That actually comes out there a day early on Sunday as opposed to Monday, doesn't Whoa, it? Oh, if you're born on Sunday. Yeah. Go to church. Yeah, go to church. Yeah. And then, and then like- listen to our podcast on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> You've done the right thing. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. I thought this whole thing was trivia-tastic, Mason. You going to veto that? Yeah. It's a, that's a veto, is it? It's a hard veto. Whole thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whole video, actually. Yeah. All right, then. Okay, bye, everyone.